Hi, I'm Mike Glenn, Senior Pastor of Brentwood Baptist Church. Thanks for being part of our YouTube channel. We'd love for you to hit subscribe and like, and that way you'll know every time a new video is released. And it's important for us to stay part of your life and of your journey. That's why we are doing these things. Uh, we love to respond to your questions and things that are important to you. One of the reasons we do this is for the practical application of the faith. Okay, Mike, I'm a Christian. Now what? I want to follow Christ. How do I do that? Uh, so one of the questions we get a lot is how you start reading the Bible. Well, first answer, start. Just anywhere and it'll work, I promise you. But if you want to be a little more systematic about it, if you want to be a little more thoughtful about it, then let's, let's do this. Uh, remember, the Bible is one book made of 66 different books, okay? It's not just one book from Genesis to Revelation. There are 66 books that have been put together over generations as the church gathered this material, these books, these letters, uh, these sermons, and, and put them together in the book that you and I call the Bible. There are obvious places to start. The most obvious is you can begin at the beginning. You can start with Genesis, and you can go all the way through Revelation, and you will know people who read the Bible through every year. This is a very effective way to do it, I will warn you. There are books like Numbers, Leviticus, Deuteronomy that are like reading through a swamp, okay? Everybody does great in Genesis, great stories. Everybody does great in Exodus, great stories. But Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, uh, then it gets to be a little more sloggy. So most people try to take a little more um, free approach than rather than just going from beginning to end. Uh, I would start with one of the Gospels. Now, understand, we have four versions of the same story. We have four experiences with Jesus written from four different perspectives, from four different communities that all uh, praised Jesus as Lord and Savior and believed in him as God's only son. So, I would start with the Gospel of Mark. Read the Gospel of Mark. It is a very short gospel. It's the second book in the New Testament. Read it, reread it, and read it again, okay? I want you to read it so that you know just about how the story is going to unfold. Mark's favorite word is immediately. He starts with Jesus preaching as an adult. There are no baby stories of Jesus. There are no uh, youth stories of Jesus. It's just, bam, Jesus is preaching. And we make a, a, a straight run for the cross. Uh, the last week of Jesus' life starts in chapter 11. The book ends in chapter 16. So you can see he gives us a short preamble to the crucifixion and then the crucifixion and what it means for us and our salvation. Matthew and Luke used Mark as an outline. So when you read Matthew and Luke, you're going to recognize patterns in Mark and in Matthew and Luke, that are the same. That's because they use the same basic outline. What Matthew and Luke have done is they've reached into this big drawer that we all have of our house, right, of, 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 of pictures that aren't in the book anywhere. There are all kind of stories of Jesus. And in John, the fourth gospel, when he says, if I were to write everything I knew about Jesus, there wouldn't be enough ink in the ocean. If the ocean were ink and the sky was a scroll, I still couldn't write down everything I can tell you about Jesus. So we have this drawer, metaphorically, of all of these pictures of Jesus dealing with people. And what Matthew and Luke did was they took Matthew's outline and they added pictures that they thought were important to their communities. So Matthew and Luke add Sermon on the Mount. This would be important for Matthew's uh, congregation that they see Jesus as the new Moses in teaching. So he puts that in his gospel. See the way it works? Now, read Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Read and read and read. John is the last gospel that was written. His understanding is, I want to tell you about what the gospel means. Okay, I've had enough time to reflect on it. I want to tell you the same story, but I'm going to give you a different angle so you can see the meaning of the text. He begins, not with the birth, he begins with creation. In the beginning was the word, the word logos, meaning, 
the essence. It was all part of the beginning, and that's who Jesus is. He is the Word of God. He is the meaning of God. He is the essence of God. So um, that's the way John starts. Now, people love reading John because John is big and bold and dramatic. But the simplest story is in the Gospel of Mark. Then, if you want to read stories about, well, okay, how do I do this? Jesus says, love your neighbor. What, what does that look like? How do I do this? Then you would read the letters of Paul. Uh, they are uh, First and Second Corinthians, uh, Galatians, Ephesians, those letters. These are all written by a preacher to a bunch of church people saying, this is what I said when I was there. This is what I mean. This is how you do it. Okay? Now, let me give you some, uh, some help here. Do not be in a, marath uh, a sprint. This is a marathon. You're going to be studying the Bible in some way for the rest of your life, okay? So if you don't get it all read this week, it's okay. Read until something strikes you. Hmm. Then write that in your journal and meditate and pray based on that passage. Let me give you an example. Today, just this very day, I'm reading in Mark chapter 6. The story is how Jesus walks across the water to his struggling disciples. And he, the text says he sees them struggling against the wind and the waves. They see him panic, and he says, don't be afraid, it's me, have courage. And he walks to the boat, and he gets in the boat with them. Now, I don't know how many times I've read that story. I don't know how many times I have preached that story. But this picture of Jesus walking across the stormy water, getting into the boat with the disciples, was a profound revelation to me. Here's the gospel. Jesus will come to you and get in your boat. He'll get in your boat with you. And then he'll help you make it to the other side. Wow. See, I spent a lot of time this morning meditating uh, on the reality that it is Christ who comes to us across the storm, comes to us in a time of panic, and he gets in the boat with us. Then I thought about all the times across my life where that actually happened, where Jesus did get in my little boat, and we made it across. Now, that's what happens, okay? Now, that's a handful of verses, but that's where I spent most of my morning. So that's what I want for you. This is slow, methodical reading where you open your mind and your heart to some experience, to some understanding where you go, oh, this is important to me. And then you write in your journal about why it's important. That way it goes from the Bible to the brain, through the journal to your heart. And when that happens, the Word will do what the Word does, and it will start shaping you into a person who is more and more like Christ. So get your Bible you're comfortable with. Get you a cheap journal, doesn't matter. I just want somewhere to write down your thoughts, okay? So, and get started with the Gospel of Mark. When you finish the Gospels, email me back, and we'll start the rest of the Bible from there. It's a good place to start. I'm glad you asked. That's a good question, and I'll see you next time. I'm Mike Glenn, Senior Pastor of Brentwood Baptist Church. This is our YouTube channel. Thanks for being part of it.